Good day. Smythe is expecting you. If you'd just like to pop that bowler hat back on. No time to waste. Please make your way to the office. Smythe's ready to take your call. What's that smell? Oh, it's you. Father is proud of me. I trust you've read the list. Ask away.
I'd say Honeystead is a value. He's trying to consolidate his own... Im he has a protege. She's exuberant. Good. People have a negative attitude. That's what's stopping them. It must be horrible to live in places without luxury. I'm afraid visitations are by invitation only. Yes, all this seems to be in order. Come right through and follow me. I wish I could meet the Queen. A little too close for comfort, mate. Have you got a reason for bothering me? Get in your pocket because we might need that. Smythe told me of your arrival. I'm afraid I cannot oblige you. Smythe seemed reticent to commit to the request to paper. That in itself caused a little apprehension. The requested document is not a trifling matter. In fact, even requesting it is a serious offence. I agree with you, which is exactly why I have to reject this request. They know, better than anyone, the reason for orders and procedures. We cannot make an exception for anybody. I don't think you quite understand the impropriety of what you just said. As such, I'll take pity on you and pretend you didn't say it. I was so careful. Please. You... you can't. You'd ruined my family. Fine, I... I don't agree with your methods, but this really is what's best for us all. Here is your decree. I cannot provide the seal, as you know. I can only hope that Smythe doesn't destroy everything we've built here in London. Given the lengths you're willing to go through, I'm not so sure.
If you've come to challenge me, you'll have to wait. I've just been bested by another bestial young thing. Ah, yes. The elder sibling we've all grown to depend on. I wonder if it's only me that fails to see how Smythe's pervasive influence benefits anyone other than themselves. It must be horrible. If you've come to challenge me, you'll have to wait. I've just been bested by another bestial young thing. Oh, you flatterer! I tell you, I'm spent. Now leave off. How oh, rude. What an odious little oik you are. I thought myself gracious enough to entertain your company. But you've revealed yourself to be very, very boring. <sighs> Shouldn't you be in Eastminster <sighs> with the other thugs? I'll do as you say. No need to be a brute. What do you want from me? Yes, the seal. If you can just hand over the appointment, let me just... Good. That should work. Now leave me be. You've caused my disposition to become quite unstable with your harsh words and hard fists. I'm thinking of composing a new... Wait, wait! Please! Am I invisible? Or are you an invalid? Which is it? If you'd just like to step over... Good evening, and welcome to this week's... As you can see, we're having some technical difficulties. The show will begin in due course. I'm not your friend, commoner. Good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of Interrogation Interregnum. I am your host, Kisby Hunter. This week I am delighted to host a scholarly debate. The issue, reducing the length of indentured servitude agreements. To litigate the issue, I am joined by Cecily Shugger, a barrister working out of the Chief Justice's chambers. She's a trustee of the 99ers, a civil rights organization advocating for indenture leniency. Ladies and gentlemen, Cecily Shagger. Thank you for having me. 
We're also delighted to welcome back a regular guest. A traditionalist noble with a wealth of military experience. Currently serving as the chief accounting officer for the Bureau of the Indentured Fiscally Terminal and Amortized Peoples. He is also the author of Lazy London and the recent follow-up, Pregnancy, Lazy Guts or Productive Runts. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome for the Duke of Richmond, Gregory James Pritchard. Good afternoon. I'll start with you, Miss Sugar. Do you really believe the fiscally irresponsible are capable of integrating into society? Do we not risk the virulent spread of mental as well as fiduciary vagrancy? Imagine if they get into the schools. Oh, now, I don't think anyone is advocating we'd release these people directly into the education system. Not yet, but please don't kid yourselves. It's coming. Roger, I can sense you'd like to respond to Cecily's ranting. Respond? I haven't said anything yet. The only one that's surprised by that is you. Uh, Miss Shugger, if you can hold your interruptions and wait until the appropriate time to respond. Duke Pritchard, please continue. Thank you kindly, Kibsby. Very passionate, but unable to control their outburst. Apologies. I believe that's the minute timer for the opening speaker. Since Cecily used her time to interrupt you, we'll just turn it off. What was I saying? Sorry, it's hard to follow with all these interruptions. Ah, that was it. These ghastly reformists will be all one hears. Shrill, droning voices spouting ill-informed opinions on matters they know nothing of. It's very simple. If you don't want to work under a custodian, don't get into debt in the first place. Indenture is a gift, given the right frame of mind. Consider a hundred years of free tutelage and guidance under a temperate, wise hand. Now, really, I must interrupt. A gift? Come on, how ridiculous. These people are practically slaves. It really is tedious to have to deal with these insistent histrionic interruptions. I agree. Miss Shugger, I'm really going to have to ask you to control yourself. You've not let me say anything, so I must make the opportunity myself. Indenture is the new face of an ancient experiment, the sanctity of debt. What a claptrap! Debt accelerated the reconstruction of Westminster. It was the rapacious force behind rebuilding, true. But by compelling people to pay their debts, they are forced to work. It renders those without capital in a potential state of subjugation. And this terrible institution of debt, which you admitted powered the rise of Westminster, this terrible institution is undermined by reducing the 100-year term by 1% or a year, correct? Yes, it's a modest decrease. But if we can start a conversation about debt relief, it'd be liberating to the majority of Londoners. Uh... Risible! People work. They must work. It forms their very being. People are incomplete unless motivated by profit. Inaction is death. The moment you break this covenant, unhealthy ideas enter the ecosystem. Indeed, such talk has proved very dangerous in the past. Precisely, Mr. Hunter. We're at a pivot point in history. Celsi, you failed to understand that you are meddling with forces you don't understand. You could awaken an atavistic deluge within society that would destabilize London. I think it's very odd that an act of passion could be depicted as some sort of frenzied chaos. You are a fool. A dangerous fool. She really must be taken off the air immediately. Is that what we're doing now, Kisby? Propagating seditious ideas. No, we don't. You're right. It's a public safety issue at this point. I quite agree. Cut her microphone. It's time we brought out our final arguments. Obviously, Cecily has said quite enough for one day. Duke, can I have you please give us a closing argument, please? No, I'd rather not. 
I think the public would be best served by wrapping this up as quickly as possible. We do not want to leave a lasting impression on the weak-minded. There is an important election coming up, and a stable transition is important for London. Ah, yes, I quite agree. Ladies and gentlemen at home, good evening from myself and everyone here at... <coughs> <coughs> oh, good heavens! What is happening? Oh, Jesus! She's been electrocuted! Get broom! Is she... fizzling? Oh, oh dear, yes. I can smell burning flesh. Uh, can we turn her off? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please leave. We cannot be responsible for any ill health gained from inhaling the fumes generated by one of our guests. It must be horrible to live in places without luxury. Fancy a poster? Support your party to victory in the polls? Oh, we've got all sorts. We've got blue for the traditionalists, led by Freddie Newell. Bit daft, but they keep a steady hand on the rudder and all that. We've got yellow for the pragmatists, if you fancy a bit of change. Lynn Moores is the leader, and she's committed. Or she should be, at any rate. To an asylum. And finally, we've got Red for the Reformist Party. 
Stark raving mad, the lot of them. They never win, but they try, bless them. So, who'll it be? And? Righto, enjoy your pork pie then. Right now, here's five. Go and put them up around Westminster. What? You didn't think I was handing them out for free, did you? Popular participation is the cornerstone of our democracy. Elections don't happen if nobody knows about them. If you need more, I've got plenty. I do hope Father is proud of me. If it's a fight you want, then a fight you'll get! There you are. Uh, uh, yeah. My... Two ways around here. It's fight time. noise.
Hello, come here. Attacking human. You there? Hello. Hello, come here. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Green. Yeah. Come. Where on earth did you come from? Ah, we fight you now. Stop you. Served my liege. <laughs> I'll get a medal for this. Yeah. Yeah. I do hope father is proud of me. That's a bit steep, though, all things considering. What? Right. You're back! Just in time! They're about to announce the results! The wonders of modern technological efficiency. Now hush! Thank you for tuning in to tonight's election night special. We just got the result from St. James Park. And the Pragmatist Party have taken St. James Park. With this seat, the Pragmatist Party has gained a majority in Parliament. We have Lynn Moore calling into the studio to give a statement on this historic upset. I want to start by thanking our supporters across Westminster who showed up and proved that change is still possible. It was a hard-fought campaign. The traditionalists held nothing back. But the people have spoken, 
and they want a pragmatist leader at the helm. Once Parliament reconvenes, we will have all hands on deck, and our first order of business will be decreasing our prison populations and increasing the meat ration. That was Lynn Moores, everyone, calling in. Wow, what a shock! Though, I suppose the pragmatists do win about as often as the traditionalists. 50-50. Still, I might go vegetarian until the next election. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Well, even if it didn't go exactly how you thought, you can sleep easy knowing your contributions mattered. For the next couple of weeks, anyway. Anyway, I'm off. It's been a pleasure. I need to warn you about something. Yes, how did you know? <clears throat> Never mind. Before I met you, I was a loner. Mostly for self-protection. Whoever said their safety in numbers was not radioactive, I'll tell you that. And as such, I've forgotten how to be a f You deserve to know. If, did you ever wonder why I just? No. I'm sorry. I'm... Within a few years... It's all right. A few months back, I was quite... I... Soon. I'm sorry. Thank you. I went to work. It was enough. I looked up at this, this man, so I did what I... But by the time... I, and that's how... The doctor said... <laughs> As to why I... I have a list. Things that I could have done after my... But now... Thank you. Now... My list isn't exactly what I'd call a high art. It's for object. I enjoy silence as much as the next person, but this is quite awkward. Sorry to bother, Gov. Got a letter for ya. You're very welcome. Have a nice day.
Am I invisible? Or are you an invalid? I do. Which is it? Excellent. Now would you please sign these articles of office? By the power vested in me, by the office of the Lord Speaker, I declare you Lord Chancellor What's Spine. that smell? Uh, oh. Thank you for oh, it's this you. great honor. And I look forward to working with you in the future. Current events have forced me to act in the present. Citizens of London, the situation has become intolerable. Violence has spilled onto the streets of London. Even inside this sacred horror, armed gangs of hoodlums are murdered. People each other. have a negative attitude. That's what's this stopping has them. To stop. This must stop. This will stop. This is my promise to you. To combat this epidemic of violence, I will take direct control of the situation. We cannot afford the chaos of indecision during this emergency. It must be horrible to live in places without luxury. Ahem. <clears throat> 